Good everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be going over shell types in War Thunder. Now why am I doing this? Normally I wouldn't go over shell types because quite frankly I'm quite experienced with shell types. However I was watching the Digital Time Travelers video the other day. He got his 100th Russian spade done. Well done. Um, and I noticed he was struggling to kill a valentine and he was saying in the video that he may have killed the valentine if he'd loaded a different shell. Just by looking at it, he didn't have a chance. But he could have potentially killed the valentine if he'd have pushed forward a bit more with his front angled, etc, etc. I'm not going to go over that because you can watch the video yourself. Um, I'll leave a link to his channel in the description. Maybe even subscribe to him. Things like that. But, um, anyway, as I was saying, um, shell types in War Thunder are of a wide variety. Now, I'm only going to go over the lower tier stuff, such as AP, high explosive, heat, etc. And go up to most of its Sabo. Now, I'm going to use the Jumbo for the start, just to show the brief all the shell types that you'll commonly see in American tanks most of the time and then I'll move on to various different nations depending on what various types of ammunition they have. So we'll start off with the APCBC. This is probably one of the most common rounds you will find on German tanks, some American tanks and British tanks, but British tanks don't feature a high explosive content. The reason for this is because British policy in World War II was to just get the shell in Penetrate the tank, job done. Not in War Thunder, sadly, but hey, I prefer it that way because then you've at least got a fighting chance. So, APCBC contains a low to, I'd probably say medium in most cases, amount of explosive. Now, the American 76 is well known for having a very good APCBC shell. It's got good penetration, good overall against angles, perfect for one shot in T-3485s, which I love doing. And overall, on guns like the Panther, this has that shell. The Tiger's 88, the King Tiger's 88, and the Flak Buster's 88, as well as the American 75, all have this shell. Obviously, penetration values differ and things like that, but that will just depend on the barrel length of the gun. So, each individual gun will obviously have a various amount of explosive. APHE shells are essentially APCBC shells. I'm not going to go over APHE shells or APHE BCs. They're pretty much equivalent to APCBC. APHE, however, is more comparable to a solid AP, except it does have explosive filler. So now let's move on to high explosive rounds. Now, high explosive rounds, I don't tend to use them. If I've got a machine gun and I've got a AP in the breach, I'll use it. But high explosive rounds are generally used by bigger caliber guns, such as Russian 100mm, 122s, 152s, and things like that. I generally wouldn't carry a high explosive shell if the caliber length of the gun, or sorry, the caliber of the gun is less than 100 millimeters. The reason for that is because I tend to find high explosive rounds very useless. They're low muzzle velocity most of the time. The US-76 here though has a good high explosive shell, but I genuinely wouldn't carry high explosive. I mean, on an American tank you've got a 50 cal and you can just go full American on them. That's my personal opinion. Next up is Solid AP. Solid AP is used mainly on British tanks, some French tanks, well in fact nearly all French tanks. Um, I believe some of the Russian guns fire these. They fire AP BCs. And um, most American stock shells are Solid AP. Very good shells, good penetration most of the time, and they will cut through pretty much anything you see. They're very good resourceful shell, not the best against side shots, but they do enough damage to cripple an enemy tank, 
maybe even outright kill it if you hit the right spot. These shells are very useful against tigers, obviously on the 76 jumbo. Um, not as, as good against panthers because it cannot penetrate the frontal plate. But other than that, AP is a very solid shot. It's, it's, in fact, in terms of damage, sometimes it's even better than APCBC from the front. From the side, use APCBC. Next up is APCR. Now, I don't actually fire this shell very often in the M4A3E2 for good reason. A, it doesn't do a lot of damage. B, it's really a last resort shell. If I'm up against a hold down tiger, I will load this shell because then you can just cut f cleanly through their turret. And the reason why I suggest you carry a couple of APCR is for that situation, because in a jumbo, you don't have a lot of advantages against a tiger. A tiger has a better gun, bigger gun, and the only time you're getting high penetration than him is if you load this shell. But other than that, APCR shells don't have a lot of shrapnel effect, and they are not the most damaging in terms of penetration. They do terrible against angles, take that into account. It's better you fire it at flat surface, so if you really need to penetrate in front of a tiger's turret, load the shell and it will cut stream cleanly, straight through up to 500 meters if he's not angled his turret. It's very useful and it has saved my life once or twice in the Sherman. Next up is a new edition, that is, well not really new, it's been in the game for a couple of, almost a year now if I recall correctly, smoke shells. These have very very low muzzle velocity, but they do carry smoke. Smoke is very useful for getting into position, giving yourself cover if you don't have smoke grenades, like on this tank, and overall they are just very useful. So the shell itself doesn't have any armor bits in contact even though the shell claims to, I've never seen this thing kill anything more than a truck. But that's my personal opinion. Smoke shells, I tend to carry about 5 to 10 of them. Not in the, ju in the jumbo, I, car I would carry typically 5. But since I don't have the shell, I can't carry them yet. But um, that's pretty much it for smoke shells. They're not, they're not, they don't do any damage against tanks. All they do is just smoke them out. If you really need to move from a position, drop a smoke shell, add a, or fire a smoke shell, add a tank, they won't be able to see anything, and you push along to their side. So now we're going to go over to Germany and my SEAL clubbing lineup to look at the Panzer 4C. And the reason why I'm doing that is because it has a high explosive anti tank shell. Some tanks do carry this shell, and I use them as guaranteed penetration against. Valentine's and an up tier, and also hull breaking. He does very well against hull breaking. I forgot to mention this about high explosive as well. If you have a gun bigger than 75 millimeters and you fire HE at something, such as an LVT, the high explosive content on a German tank, well, in fact, any tank with a high explosive shell, and um, in general, high explosive rounds, I would rather take heat. If someone said to me, you can either take 5 heat or 5 HE, I'd rather take heat or heat because I can at least use them as an anti-tank shell in most situations. Heat has the same problem as high explosive though. Once it hits a, let's say a fence or a wall, it will explode and it will do absolutely nothing to the enemy tank on the other side. Maybe even put a bit of shrapnel in their track, but other than that, nothing serious. So now we're going to go over to Britain to look at APs, or APDS, which the Comet has. APDS has had a bit of a bad rep for having low shrapnel, and that is very true. When I spaded the Comet, there were so many times where the shell just did not do enough damage and I died. It's very frustrating, but I did like the Comet in general. These shells are very useful against tigers. They can cut through the frontal plate of a panther really well. And, well, they're a very useful shell. They don't do a lot of damage, but they're more focused on get the shell in, penetrate the tank, and then you can load a AP, most likely. 
Another shell type whilst I'm here at the Comet is the APC. This is the first shell you can unlock on the Comet. It's reasonably useful, but I typically would keep some APC and some Sharp Mark 6 because the Sharp Mark 6, in my opinion, traps on shrapnels, sorry, a little bit better. Then once you get Shot Mark 8, carry about 20 of these. And once you get Sabo, carry about 20 of these. That's my personal opinion. SBAA, that's quite easy to go over. I'll use Germany for that. In the Werbel Wind, you have access to APIT, HVAP, and High Explosive. HVAP is essentially APCR. APIT, I will also go over the Italian APIT and show the difference. But um, High Explosive in SBA, I don't tend to carry them. I find a Pentagon Note 40 to be perfect at taking out planes. Now the APIT in most nations doesn't carry any explosive filler, it's just a solid single 20mm shell that will just go straight through and hit whatever it's in front of it. Not in the Italians case. With the Italians, such as the AS-42, the L-640 and the AB-41, you get a small amount of explosive for some reason. I think it's because they just copy and pasted the L-333's garden well, shell, and just put it on there and claimed it was an APIT round. There has been situations where it has actually saved me for having a small amount of explosive. And, well, they're very useful. They are... They're a handy backup. However, once I unlock Pounds Gun Up 40, it's 50-50, so you'd be getting it anyway, but if you want to carry a full clip, be my guest. But I personally would just fire Pounds Gun Up 40. So I hope that clears some misconceptions up, because I see a lot of people struggling with um, shell types in general, and I see a lot of people just struggling to fire the right shell type at the right moment. And I hope Digital Time Traveler, if you watch this video, mate, it helps you out a little bit, and hopefully it will give you a hand in some situations, because sometimes solid AP may not be the best shell, you might think. I've got to start this tank. I might want to fire APHE or APCBC and things like that. So I hope that clears everything up. I can go over the top tier shells, however, I have never used them. But I can go over them if you guys wish. So leave a comment on this video if you wish me to. And I will catch you on the next one.